Hello everybody and welcome back to How To RA2, I almost forgot the name of this series. Today we are going to be taking on spinners, how to make effective horizontal and vertical spinners. We'll mainly concentrate on horizontal spinners, but some of the techniques that you've heard of, uh, that I've talked about before in videos, could be used for both. So I'll start this video by showing you a very powerful full body spinner that was sent to me by Liam C. It is an upgraded helichopper, and as you'll notice, a lot shorter of a helichopper. With the two ZTEC motor systems still in place, he was able to just really compact this thing. I mean, it looks like it got crushed by one of those hydraulic presses that you see on YouTube. I'll show you how to build this at the end, but we'll go through every step before that on how to make the most basic of spinners, and then how you slowly improve your speed, your strength, and everything else to make somebody like Helichopper. So of course, the first way you can make a spinner, the very basic way, is just slap on an angle connector, uh, base plate anchor, right? What is that called? Base plate anchor. You slap that in, you slap on an extender, and then you slap on a crappy motor, right? Everyone knows this. Very, very basic. If some of you are very new to the game and something you might not know, the next step is to put a burst motor into your body, then you put on the extender, and then you follow it up with your weapon motor, yeah, in HPZ tech in this case. The game has a slight little glitch thing that when you do this, your weapon motor, in this case the normal Z tech, will get a slight boost in pace. And you do not need component freedom to do this, that's the best part. As long as when you go to put on your weapon motor, um, you're not having it halfway in and out of the body because it still does the weird shit it normally does. Whatever. But that's basically what it looks like then. You can adjust your start point how you want. Um, it helps you get your motor into a place that might make your bot a little more accurate. Uh, that's how it was when we first uh, introduced it into BattleBots Reborn. Ignore how crappy everything looks. I'm just doing it to show everything there. I'm not making a perfect bot. The next thing you could do is a double layer. Now, you'll see, you've seen Tombstone, the new version that competed in the Prediction series, and you probably noticed its weapon looked a little, uh, a little thicker, right? That's because, look at that. You, if you're using extenders as a long part of your horizontal spinner, well, double stack it. You put one on your T-connector, like that, like the normal end connecting point, and then you sh uh, switch it up and use one of the side connections to have two of these running next to each other, and then you just put a spike or whatever on each, not that spike. Where's the... There it is, the iron spike. One there. If you want it perfect, you need component freedom. As you can see, the bottom one's a little bit crooked, because they do technically slightly overlap. But now you've got two iron spikes. There's a little bit more surface area, which is pretty neat as well. If you watched last episode, you would have also seen how we improved hammer bots by protecting the long extenders that are so horribly exposed on a bot. Well, you can do the same thing with your horizontal spinner too. Put a blade along the extender. So now, the your opponent's not going to be hitting that extender that doesn't cause any damage and is pretty weak. It's hitting a stronger blade that causes damage. Here's my empty box again. I'll show you quickly what the double motor system looked like originally in Helichopper. Slap one motor on, slap one motor on. It's as simple as that. You have to, the, the problem with this is this weapon, this weapon motor is spinning on its own and then this other one is trying to spin on its own and it takes a little bit of time for the two to get in sync with one another. So this is why Helichopper takes so long to spin up. And here is how Helichopper was made by Liam C. He started off with your motor, your Z-Tech. Then, he took a small little disc. Remember how I've said in the past, Component Freedom allows you to attach a piece to any of the green attachment points on something. So as you know, there's a green attachment point on the Z-Tech, so I was able to attach the disc to the bottom there. So, now, the, e the HP Z-Tech you see will cause this disc to spin, and then what you do is you take another Z-Tech, attach it to the disc, if you can get in the right spot. Okay, I did it. And there you go, there's two Z-Techs inside of each other. That's how you get a much smaller uh, full body horizontal spinner with that system. I may try this on a tombstone or something just for shits and giggles, but it's, I mean, the next problem you're going to see here is top attachment points of the Z-Tech are inside each other, 
and I don't know which one is the right one. So here's a look, of course, at Tombstone, the new Tombstone that we had sent to us by Virus. Now, what do you notice here in this machine? First, you'll notice the double layer system with the iron spikes and the round extenders to make a little bit of a thicker, more powerful damaging blade, but also another key that I mentioned last episode that pretty much goes for every bot. Protect your vitals. Protect weapons that aren't inside the chassis that wouldn't otherwise be protected by that chassis. So look at all of these extenders around it. Look at like, you have to do a lot of damage to get to this weapon motor and to stop it. So it's pretty difficult. I guess a word of advice for when you're trying to build robots and you're trying to think of how to perfect them. They always say think outside the box. I'm gonna tell you, think outside the box, but just right next to it. Like, look at the flaps on the ground that are right next to that box. You're still outside the box with thinking, because, you know, that's the way to go. That's what's cool with these days. But you don't have to go too crazy with it. Just look around. Like in this case, you build tombstone with some extenders and just a couple iron spikes on the end, like what mine had, and you gotta think, okay, well, how do I improve this? Motor, protected, weapon, stronger with another set, and there's so much else you can do in terms of that. Uh, don't, don't forget the boosts. Uh, this Tombstone version doesn't actually have the burst mode of boosts, but if you do other things right, you don't necessarily need it. This is a stronger weapon, not necessarily a faster weapon. Faster weapons do not actually, they don't immediately mean success. When you're building a vertical spinner, I think the most important thing you can do is to hide the motor with component freedom's normal glitch of attaching it to a chassis and then it disappears. That whole thing. Let me show you really qu uh, really quickly the Brutus that appeared in Season 3 of BattleBots Reborn Cup. I left that weapon motor exposed, but I was trying something new where I put a bunch of extenders around it as like a cage and it didn't really work. Because not only is it gonna be a, a, a big weight requirement to actually cover it, but then they're weak, they're gonna get chopped off, it's just not gonna work. Brutus 2018 is different, of course, because look, that motor's just floating in the air until it disappears. That's probably one of the better things you can do for your vertical spinner. Um, if you also wanna have a, an effective vertical spinner, I think you gotta go with some sort of wedge in the front because vertical spinners, their issue it can their issue can be hit and the weapon stops until you back away. And so you're it's constantly requiring bots to be separated in a, a uh, tactical battle of positioning and stuff. If you've got a wedge that can get under your opponent and then kind of flip them, uh, hopefully their weight isn't enough that when you hit them it's just uh, I'm straining to get this bot off of my weapon. Whereas you can go pop, 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 and then cause all sorts of damage. But by having a wedge and unsettling and unbalancing your opponent, there's less likelihood that the weapon would stop. Effective vertical spinners should also maybe be invertible. Um, it is possible, look at Monsoon, and Monsoon's weapon can be used in both directions. That's real life and on the game, the Pokebro version that I've been using a lot of. Either be able to get yourself back on your wheels, or be able to work both ways. Because as you can see, when Brutus got flipped against, uh, Brutus got flipped in predictions when he fought Warhawk, and it just wasn't, that was it. That was all that was needed to stop Brutus from winning the fight. So, again, think outside the box, but right near it. Quite frankly, I can't think of much else to say to improve your spinners. If these techniques aren't working for you, then let me know in the comments and I'll try to help out. Hopefully they are, and if there's any new techniques that you can think of, then let me know and I'll gladly take a look at them myself because I like learning new things. That's all I can really think of for this episode. I struggled to get enough content, I just, I guess I overlooked uh, some of the issues you could have in building spinners and stuff. But as you see, there are some helpful tips that you can try that should improve your weapon itself and the bot itself with everything you do when you work around it. If you have any other questions or any suggestions for the series, let me know in the comments below. And I hope this was a helpful video for you. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.